Working at the vehicle interior, on the driver's side, pull the parking brake release handle to make sure the parking brake is fully released. There is no cable adjustment at the parking brake pedal to worry about. Turn on the ignition key and step on the brake. Put the transmission into neutral. This is so you can rotate the rear wheels as needed. This picture illustrates the right rear brake assembly with the wheel removed. Use a flathead screwdriver to lever off the anti-rattle spring and pull it out of the caliper. Unplug the electrical connector for the brake pad wear sensor by squeezing the electrical connector and pulling it straight out of the other side of the connection. This picture illustrates the inside view of the right rear brake caliper. Remove the two T40 Torque caliper mounting pins recessed in the rubber caliper slides, green arrows. There may be a cover that pops out of the rubber inserts. Our car did not have them. I like to use a large flathead screwdriver to lever the caliper over and force the caliper piston back into the caliper. Remove the caliper from its brake caliper bracket. Use a hook to support it or rest it on the spindle. Do not let it hang by the brake line as this will damage the line. Remove the outer brake pad from the caliper bracket. This photo illustrates the rear caliper bracket on the right rear wheel with the caliper removed. Remove the two 18mm fasteners, green arrows, for the caliper bracket. Remove the caliper bracket from the spindle. Remove the T40 torque fastener as indicated by the green arrow. If it's stuck, you can use this commercially available hand impact tool. You can set it to rotate clockwise or counterclockwise to loosen. Hold onto the tool firmly and hammer on the end of it to loosen the fastener. There's a chance the brake rotor may not come off because of a lip on the inner part of the rotor from rubbing against the parking brake shoes. You may need to adjust the parking brake shoes inward to be able to remove the brake rotor. Rotate the brake rotor until the brake fastener hole is between approximately 9 and 10 o'clock position. Insert a flathead screwdriver into the hole and insert it into the gears on the parking brake adjustment pawl. Lever in the direction of the blue arrow to retract the pawl adjustment and allow the pads to come inward. Now it should be much easier to remove the brake rotor from the hub. Pull the brake rotor off the hub flange. Spin the hub flange until one of the large holes lines up with the parking brake shoe mounting springs. Use a pair of needle nose pliers and insert it into the inside of the upper parking brake parking shoe mounting spring and grip the middle tang. Push the spring in and twist it 90 degrees to unlock the spring from the backing plate. You may have to wiggle around the spring to get it to unlock from the backing plate. Pull the spring completely out of the hub flange. Perform the same task as the upper parking brake shoe mounting spring on the lower parking brake shoe mounting spring. Using a pair of needle nose pliers, insert it inside the lower parking brake shoe mounting spring and grip the middle tang. Push the spring in and twist it 90 degrees to unhook the spring from the backing plate. You may have to wiggle it around to get the spring to unhook from the backing plate. When it does, pull the spring out of the hub flange once it's unhooked. The parking brake springs are too strong to pull apart to get the parking brake shoes around the hub flange. I like to lever down on the lower brake shoe or lever up on the upper brake shoe to separate the pads on the side of the adjuster until the adjuster dislodges. Pull the adjuster out from between the two brake shoes. This will allow the spring to pull the two shoes closer together. Bring the two shoes together and unhook the parking brake shoe return spring, green arrow, out of the slot for it in the brake shoe, yellow arrow. You can now pull the parking brake brake shoes apart from around the hub flange with only one spring holding them together. Keep in mind the position of the brake shoes in the spreading mechanism so you know where to put them for installation. Clean the backing plate with brake parts cleaner and apply a small amount of grease to the backing plate, green arrow. Inspect the parking brake adjustment pawl and make sure you can thread it in and out for parking brake adjustment.
Installation is the reverse of the removal steps. Assemble the parking brake shoes as pictured here and install the parking brake adjustment pawl in the shoes and use that spring to hold it together. Wrap the shoes around the hub flange. Use an old pair of dykes or needle nose pliers to insert the remaining parking brake shoe return spring. Insert the parking brake shoe mounting springs, push in and twist 90 degrees to lock them into the backing plate. Install the brake rotor, fasteners and adjust the parking brake shoes. Install the brake caliper bracket, brake pads and brake caliper. Install the anti-rattle spring and the wheel and you should be good to go. Thanks for watching. Click here to view the original article along with hundreds of other DIY content for your car.